Good to see everyone tonight. <clears throat> Trust you had a wonderful day. We're in the book of Joshua. Another one of my heroes, Brother Joshua. Such that, before we're married, before we had children, it's like if we ever have a son, we're going to name him Joshua. And if we ever had two sons, the second would have been Samuel. But we didn't have that opportunity. Everybody ready? I feel a little wound up tonight, okay? Amen. Uh, let's see what happens. When Joshua chapter 6, I don't know if I said chapter 6 yet or not. Joshua chapter 6, I want to say thank you to the pastor, to his wife, to the church for allowing us to come again. This is our fourth time back. That's a blessing to us to have repeat opportunities like that. And, uh, but now, it's all on you. The first time you're taking a chance, but you have us back four times, you know what you're getting. So here you are. Amen. <laughs> uh, praise us. Good to see everyone. Praying about this, well, actually for a few days, last night, this morning, then when we got back this afternoon, and, and I'm convinced this is what the Lord wants for us tonight, okay? So let's all stand to honor God's Word. You know, here's another big 50-cent word about God's Word. Actually, it's two words. All sufficient. Okay? All sufficient means... It's all sufficient. No. Now, that's deep right there, isn't it? It means that it contains everything we need for life and godliness. Amen? Yeah. How many believe that? Uh, yeah. Three of us, good. <laughs> Folks, we live in a day where that truth should become even a greater reality in your personal life. Here we are, Joshua 6. Here we go, let's have fun. See what God has for us. And now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant. Let the seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city. And let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Armed people in the house of God. I love it. Anyway, let's keep moving. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets and the rearward came after the ark. The priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your uh, voice, uh, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout, then you shall shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about at once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually, and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the river came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once, and returned into the camp. So they did six days. 
And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose up early about the dawning of the day and compassed after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew at the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Drop down to verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Let's pray right there. Lord, I realize this is a familiar account. Lord, I pray that we not look at it as a Sunday school Bible story, but as an impact in our life for everyday living. We pray, God, for the lost to be saved, the saints to be encouraged, their faith to be strengthened tonight. In Jesus' name, for your glory, amen. All right, thank you. You may be seated. So I know that you've heard this historical account before. There's good possibility that many of the adults, if you've been in church any length of time, have actually taught this historical account to the children somewhere along the line. Is that true? Okay, two of you. Okay. Well, the title tonight is this. How to face Jericho's in your life today. I believe God for the Jerichos. Do you? Let us believe God for the Jerichos. So God helping us tonight. We're going to take this familiar, familiar historical account. By the way, that means it actually happened just the way it said it did. Okay. It's not just a Bible story. It's a historical fact. Right. So we're going to take a look at some practical ways to face our Jerichos today with the same victory that Joshua did back in his day. That's called application. And we can do that because Brother Paul said to the church of Corinth that these were our end samples. We can look at what happened to the Old Testament Israel and apply those things to New Testament personal Christianity. That's fair, so we're not twisting anything. <laughs> Amen. So, how many has ever ran into an impossible situation where there's no way around it, there's no way over it, there's no way under it, there's no way through it? You ever been there? Tonight's message is such an illustration. This account is an accurate historical account of the defeat of Jericho. And in human eyes, it was an impossible situation. You couldn't go over it. You couldn't go under it. You couldn't go through it. And sure, you could have walked around it, but unless God got involved, the walls would have never fell down. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> Well, amen. And by the way, while we're talking about these walls, these weren't your typical sissy walls. These were big walls. In your house, you have about a six-inch wall. I'm not sure how thick they are here in this building. But nonetheless, they're not as thick as Jericho's walls. Jericho's walls, from my research, said that you can have four chariots running four abreast, racing on top of this wall. Folks, that's pretty big. In other words, you're not going to just walk up to it and kick it and it'll fall over. <laughs> yeah, in fact, <laughs> you can pull out your favorite rifle and fill it full of lead and you're not even going to penetrate the wall. I mean, these are heavy-duty walls. Amen? So you might say it was impregnable. You might say that it's impossible. Amen. Now quit reading ahead. I know you know the end of the story. But later hadn't happened yet. This is before later. Eat with me? Sure, we know later, but uh, don't cheat. This is before later. 
And in their mind, their perception, ah, this is impossible. Okay? <laughs> Some of you are looking at me funny. I mean, we got to keep cheating looking ahead. Okay? All right, so anyway, having said that, do you have some Jerichos in your life that need to come down? Are there some walls in your life that need to crumble? Is there a particular area in your life that you desperately need victory in? I want to, by God's grace, give us some very practical considerations as we face our own Jerichos today. Here's number uno. Number one. The way up is down. Number one, the way up is down. We're in our passage here tonight in Joshua 6. Everybody there still? Just look a few verses above that. You run into chapter 5. Back up to about 513. I want to give some background to come into this. So in Joshua 513, the Bible says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did, what's it say, church? Worship. Worship. And said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. If we were having a Bible Institute class tonight, this is where you'd introduce a doctrine called a Christophanes. Boy, that's a big word. But what that means is that is a, an, an Old Testament appearance of Jesus Christ. Okay? If you think Jesus Christ began in Bethlehem, you've messed up. Yeah. He's eternal God. That's right. He manifests himself in the flesh in Bethlehem, yeah. but he already was forevermore eternal God. Amen. He still is eternal God. Amen. He's forevermore going to be eternal God. Yeah. Okay? And the reason I believe this is not only the title, but also he receives worship, and we're only to worship God. So there's no doubt in my mind, this is Jesus Christ. So when we win our battles, we win our battles on our knees and on our faces before the Lord. Folks, you can't do it in your own power. You can't do it in your own strength. I do find this pretty amazing that Jesus Christ himself came down to direct this particular battle for Joshua. So the first step toward victory is for you and I to confess we're not the one in command. We're not the boss of our life. At best, we're second in command to realize that you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirits, which are God's. What is that, Corinthians 6? Folks, we don't belong to us anymore. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. He bought you with his own blood. Yeah. Amen? So it's not about you. Well, that's a real shocker in the I society we live in, isn't it? We got everything. I clouds, I phones, I tablets, I, 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 I. No, 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 no. It's not about you. It's about him. Amen. Amen. And there can be no victory in public unless we're experiencing true worship of the Lord in private. Amen. And remember, we've established our definition that worship is one willfully humbling themselves by either bowing, kneeling, or prostrating himself on the ground 
and adoration of God. A piece of the dictionary from the Hebrew dictionary actually used the word reflectively, which means a reflex. So in other words, when we recognize God as God, like a reflex, we will fall to our face. That's what it means. So here's Joshua. As soon as he recognized him as Jesus Christ, as the Lord, where'd you find him? Yeah. On his face. Right. Yep. Amen. And when you're worshiping, you're starting to get a little theme of this this week. What are some natural things that happen? Well, Isaiah 6, Isaiah, when he was there, he said, woe is me. And he went to confess in his sins. And then we see him surrendering to the call of God. And Joshua, what do we find there? We find again the, that adoration, that humility, but also a surrender. See what he's talking about? Because he said very plainly, what wilt thou have thy servant to do? Lord, I'm signing the paper. The paper's blank. I'm laying on the ground. Here's the pen. You fill in the blanks. That's surrender. Folks, that's how we need to approach Jesus Christ for his will in our life. Yeah. It's not tell us what you want me to do first and I'll pray about it. No, 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 no. It's yes, Lord. Yeah. It's not lying out in veto. Well, I don't like this, don't like this, and I don't like that. Who are we? Folks, it's the Lord. It's his will. He's the captain. Amen. And if we're going to win the battles, we need to worship him. And from that worship, amen, comes that humility, comes that surrender, comes that dependence on him and that full surrender of one's life, one's plans, one's goals, one's ambitions. Amen. Uh, amen. So Joshua fell on his face to worship God. He took off his shoes in humility. He turned all his plans over to his commander when he said, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Hey, as Christian soldiers, we're in the Lord's army. Amen. We must submit to Christ as our captain. We need to listen to and obey the orders of God's word. If we want God's blessings, we're going to have to play by God's rules. Amen? I don't care if the culture's going another direction. If we want God's blessings, we got to play by his rules. I don't care if you got a big old smiley face on TV and say, you find the real champion in you and everybody be happy. He's wrong. Yeah. You got to follow God's rules. He wrote them down for us in the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's a book for us. Right. Amen? amen? Well, amen. <laughs> so, Christ gave Joshua the exact orders for overcoming the city. And all he had to do now was obey by faith. See, God had promised Jericho to Joshua. But the people had to step out by faith to claim the victory. I know we're in chapter 5 right now, but just go ahead and turn back. My, my Bible is like two pages. But turn back to chapter 1. Okay, three pages. But in chapter 1, I want to show you something. In Joshua chapter 1, verse number 3, God told Joshua, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon... That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Folks, the laws of hermeneutics, how you study the Bible, the laws of interpretation, is that we look at the scripture literally, grammatically, historically. Okay? So if he says the sole of your foot, in Hebrew, because this is the Old Testament, he means the sole of your foot. <laughs> See how easy the Bible is to understand? Right. I mean, it's just that simple. So, in other words, if Joshua expected to get a blessing, his sole of his foot needed to do some treading. And guess what? Your feet don't tread sitting on the pew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Brother John. Make footsteps, but don't get up. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. So, so look at verse number 5. 
There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. Boy, that's what we need to hear today. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. So what I'm driving at here, church, is the that faith is taking God at his word. Remember Abraham and Isaac? And if you take God at his word, which is faith, then there's going to be obedience. So faith is not passive. It is active. It is trusting the Lord while you're moving forward. God said, wherever my soles and my feet shall tread, I'm going to give that to you. Boy, that's a motivator to get out there and mark off some territory, isn't it? Everywhere I walk, do, 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 do. that's going to be mine. God told me. What a promise. Y'all look at me funny. Isn't that what he said? So Joshua believed it. He needed to make making some footsteps. Yeah. Amen? How are you doing with your footsteps? Good. See, serving God's not on a pew. It's walking by faith. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's moving. Yeah, amen. So they're never going to have victory sitting in the camp. And honestly, you're never going to have victory sitting on the pew. And Brother Paul told his son Timothy in the faith, 2 Timothy 2, 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Boy, that's appropriate preaching for today. Do you think the ministry is easy? You know, Paul said it's work of the ministry. And he wasn't lying. It is work. Doesn't matter whether you're the pastor or the evangelist, it's work. Amen. <laughs> no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if any man also strive for masteries, yet he's not crowned, except he strive lawfully. So if you want God's blessings, you have to just play by his rules and you walk by faith on the promises of God. And as a soldier of the Lord in the Lord's army, you can't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life and expect to please him. And folks, that's one of the problems we see in the churches that belong to Jesus Christ across this land is this thing called worldliness has come creeping. No, no, no. Come busting through the front doors and it's plaguing the children of God. And they think they got to dress in the same fashion as the world. And they need to have the same music as the world. And they need to have the same entertainment as the world. And wait, wait. God said, oh, no, 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 no. If you're going to be my soldier and you're going to please me, then you need to not be entangled with affairs of this life. And folks, that boils down right into our music we listen to. It boils down to our entertainment that we allow in our homes or in our lives. It even affects the hobbies that you and I have. Amen. We are to be seeking those things which are above. We need to set our affections. We need to set our mind. This is the direction we're going. I want to please my commander in chief. Yeah, I want to please my captain. And if that be the case, then I don't have the luxury to entertain myself or, or wait a minute, uh, how do you say it? Entangle myself with the affairs of this world. And God's not against entertainment. But you better make sure it's right. So if you're watching shows, they're cussing like a bunch of sailors. I don't know why they say that. Other people cuss too. You know what I mean? I've heard other people who weren't sailors cuss. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, you know the saying. What are you doing watching that? Hey. Or if they have some shady kind of scenes. I'm being respectful because of the ladies and children. You know what I'm saying here about how to spell it out. What are you doing watching that? Hey. Yep. Amen. 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 Wow. And what are you doing listening to music about it? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. <laughs> the, the biggest difference between country and, and rock is you can understand country better. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same beat. Right. Right. And the immorality of the one is the immorality of the other. 
And where's the glory sitting on your porch with a hound dog with your j a truck jacked up on blocks drinking a beer? And that glorifies God? You see what I'm saying? Right. And then we go around, oh, it's different today. Boy, we just don't see the power of God. I believe there's a reason. We haven't met him out there on our face worshiping him. There's been a lack of surrender in our life where he's the captain of our life. Right down to where our shoe leather walks on the sidewalk. Boy, don't you love these Old Testament accounts, how relevant they are for us today? Yep. Amen. <laughs> well, amen. <laughs> Folks, I just want to tell you, <laughs> we all have a testimony. Other people are watching. <laughs> Even at the campground. Had a guy come up tonight. He said, I figured you was a pastor. I never told him that. Of course, this isn't campground attire. He said, I know she was going Sunday. And I noticed your lady folks dress respectful. I said, thank you. We weren't doing that for them. But it's still right for a lady to dress like a lady. That's right. Amen. Well, anybody's looking or not. Right. Amen. And, and on Sunday, they ought to see you pull out of your driveway and head off to church. They ought to see the same thing happen on Wednesday night. Or if your church does Thursday, I mean, that's autonomy. I'm not, you know, do it. Right. Okay. Point of it is, folks are watching. They watch you at work when things go wrong. See what kind of attitude you have. Good right. <laughs> Amen. So I'm saying the way up is down on your knees. It is where by faith we put on the armor of God. Then we get up and we follow God's plan according to his word. See, what are you talking about the armor? Ephesians 16, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. See, this is a war, folks. We're in mortal combat. That's not just a game. This is real life. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world. Time out. Has the, the, the wicked rulers and the darkness of this world been more evident than the last couple of years? I mean, it's always been there. But for me and my perspective, it's like my soul. I see it every man. They're dirty, clear to the top. Or I should say, from the top all the way down. Anyway, I'll let that rabbit keep going. <laughs> I'm just saying, and you, you know where I mean in here, okay? Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand, to, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore. Well, there's great principles here for us, folks. We're living in this kind of day right now. We're facing 2022 Jerichos. And we're going to have the same victory that Joshua did if we follow the same plan as the way up is down on your knees. It's where by faith we put on the armor of God. It's where we're worshiping him. Yay, Lord, what would you have me to do? It's where we've surrendered to him. And then we get up and follow the plan he gives us. It's where we meet with God every day, every day, every day. Bible reading. How's your Bible reading doing? Oh, if you let off on your Bible reading, you need to get back on the horse. Good. Well, I don't know if you read the Bible on a horse or not, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Boy, there's all these sayings we have, don't we? See the guy reading his Bible. Well, happy trails. <laughs> but read your Bible. That's what I'm trying to say. You mean y'all drove clear over here from Indianapolis to tell us to read our Bible? Yes. Why? Because there's a troop be known. I went row by row and asked you, have you fallen off any this year? I'm thinking somebody might say, yeah, I have. I'm not reading as much as I used to. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm just, that's what advantage does. He stirs it up. I'm not telling you anything new. You already know this account. You know Joshua. But good night. Look at all the meat and taters in Joshua for us tonight. Amen.
<laughs> Thank you, Lord. And don't forget prayer time. Mm -hmm. Folks, you can't win in this spiritual battle if you don't know how to do some praying. Right. And, and there's hundreds of books on prayer. Some of them are eating good. <laughs> but if you don't pray, who cares if you read the book on it? Right. So the best way to learn how to pray is uh, pray. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 And folks, you're in a dark place. There are strongholds on every hand here. Yeah. I'm not telling you something new. But you think you're going to win battles against that if you don't have the weapon of prayer? It's not going to happen. Right. It's going to backfire and you'll get discouraged. Yeah. Huh. Right. Well... And in the Bible reading, yes, keep reading. In the praying, amen, keep praying. But don't forget to back up every once in a while, three, four, five, ten minutes, and just worship the Lord. Enjoy your Savior. Brag on Him. Boast Him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I mean, you've heard me say it a hundred times this week, and hopefully I say it two hundred more times this week, because I want us to get that. You know what I'm seeing amongst God's people? Not only the fear that's plagued our society, but I see a spirit of defeatedness. We're not defeated. Yeah. I read the last chapter. We win. <laughs> Give me a fight right there, man. All right. You know what I'm saying? You no, know, the battle's not over. But we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. Jesus already whooped the devil. Happened at Calvary. Good. And that third day when he got up on the first day of the week, he won. Yep. Game over. <laughs> so don't let him be telling you he's still in charge. He lost. Trade. Amen? Amen. <laughs> well, I'm getting some funny looks tonight. I'm just saying, we're just, we're just trusting God. So the way up is down. I could probably preach the whole night just right there, but I'm going to go ahead and go to number two. Here's the second practical step. Here's number two. We must follow God's methods. Okay. When we do, God wins the battle, and he gets the glory. When I follow my own plan, if I happen to get any victory, it's never lasting, and I get the glory. Well, that's not going to work. Right. It hasn't ever worked in the past. Yeah. See what I mean? You know what the worst thing ever could happen to you? Is that you would be a successful failure. <laughs> you say, what do you mean by a successful failure? That you had success outside of the will of God for your life? Right. That would be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Yes. Does this make sense? <laughs> that, that's what I'm talking about. So... Moses told Israel in Deuteronomy 3.22, You should not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. Boy, there's some confidence there. Remember that song, uh, The Battle's Not Yours, Little David? Belongs to God. I forget how it goes, but I remember I like the song. So back to Joshua. Israel captured the city because they followed four easy steps. Okay, so here's 2A. This is 2A, this is, or number 1. Whichever way you outline your notes. So 2A is, they obeyed their leaders. Back to our text. I, I hadn't departed from it, I'm just laying the groundwork. Now we're ready to go to preaching. Alright, so here we are in chapter 6, verse 6. They obeyed their leaders. That was their first step, how they had victory. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, encompass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. 
Then it came to pass when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of Horam's horn passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets and the rearward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. Okay. So God, he established a chain of authority, the chain of command in Joshua chapter 1. Here now in Joshua chapter 6 is practiced or carried out. So in other words, God gave Israel their leader, Joshua. Okay? Moses, he called him home. Joshua's the man now. All right, hang on. Then he gave Joshua the plan for victory. Then Joshua gave the plan to the people, and they followed the Lord's command together, and they seen an impossible situation become possible. Okay? All right, so let's draw the application. God prepares a man and he prepares a people. Then he puts them together. I'm talking about the local church. So in other words, this isn't a job or a career like you go down to Walmart to be a CEO somewhere. God prepares a man and he prepares a people and he puts them together. Everybody with me? And see, passages like Jeremiah 3.15 says that God gave us pastors according to his own heart. Wow. So God gave you Pastor Reibenbach out of his own heart. I mean, is that, that's what it says. In Ephesians chapter... Is it four or five? I think it's five. Where he lists the gifts of the local church. He says some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastor teachers. Okay. And then that context is local church. You can't get around it. So then God gives a gift to the local church, the pastor. Okay. So who did all that? God. Yeah, everybody with me? All right, now, <laughs> since God gave the pastor according to his heart and it's a gift to the local church, then God gives the vision for this local church that belongs to Jesus because he's the captain. It doesn't belong to him. It never belonged to me. All the people at the Danforth Church, I know what they meant, but it wasn't ever my church. Okay, I know the jargon. But it's his church. Everybody with me? Okay. And then God gives the vision. And if he's like me, it's like, ah, that's impossible. <laughs> that's how you know it's from God. Because <laughs> yeah. he's not going to give you a vision you can do. Because right. then you get the glory. Out of all that God does and gives and shares, he doesn't share his glory. That's only his. Rightfully so. I mean, it's not a bad thing. I mean, he's God. That's exactly right. Okay? So that being the case, then God gives him a plan for this church. The pastor then is the under-shepherd, and he's given biblical responsibility to lead the flock. Everybody with me? So if he's going to lead the flock, you have to follow him. He can't lead if you don't follow. But if there's ever a problem in our day to day, it's with authority. Yeah. And nobody likes anybody telling them what to do. But if this is from God's heart, then it's out of his goodness because God's good. And if it's a gift to the local church, and then people come, and I don't know, so don't tell me, because I went to Liberty Preacher. I have no idea who all is members of this church and who isn't. 
I have an idea that obviously some of you aren't because you're with another church. But anyway, I'm just, you know, being frank. I don't know who all is, who's on whose team, okay? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. But let's suppose you come two or three years. What, you're a three-year-old visitor? How's that scriptural? That's three years you've run in rebellion, friend. I'm not being mean. But you're out from the authority of a local church. You think we just drive around the country because we've got a hanger to do so? No, we're obeying the call of God on our life. No. So do we just go out and do it? No. We were sent out of True Light Baptist Church. We work under their authority. Because there aren't any loose cannons with God. Right. And I'm certainly not a big fan of the pair of church organizations. And there goes another rabbit. But the point is, in this dispensation, God's plan is everything is in, through, and out of the local church. Right. Yeah. So join, get in line, and help the pastor accomplish the impossible by watching God work for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're welcome. So, another responsibility the pastor has is to feed the flock. And I don't know if his messages just fall out of the sky or not, but I have to study for mine. You know, he's smiling because I know he's got to study for his too. And so does Sam, so does Brother Gould, okay? I understand. So protect his time. See, out of the 21 years I pastored, 18 of them I worked outside the church. You know how hard that is for a pastor? His heart is so divided. Because his desire is to be here and push the church forward. If he's called, that's what it is. But yet at the same time, a thing called life gets in the way. And you got to work. It's not bad. I mean, we have a heritage of men who did both for hundreds of years. So... We're not the only kid on the block that's ever done that. I'm just saying it's a division. And there are some times on Saturday night, and I didn't mean for it to slip on Saturday night, but Sunday always happens on Sunday. So Saturday night I found myself in my study sometimes, and I stare at the clock for an hour, just staring at it, watching it click, tick, 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 okay? Because I'm trying to get my mind to shift gears mentally so I can wrap it around the Word of God so I bring something to the people besides cheese and crackers. And everybody likes cheese and crackers once in a while, but you can't live on that. you got to spend time with God. So help him out. I don't know who cleans the church, but it shouldn't be him. You don't have any grass to mow, so that's a plus. Back at our place, we had nine acres. And God gave me Joshua. <laughs> All right, son. It's your turn. <laughs> so he's been mowing, what, since... Eight, ten, nine, four, I don't know. I forget when he started. But he's a mowing machine now. Amen. <laughs> so thank God for the helpers. So me and I don't encourage you to come along and help the pastor. He can't do it by himself. God didn't intend for him to do it by himself. God intended for the church to work. Having a mind to work. <laughs> Amen. And his job is to protect the flock. That's what a shepherd does. A wolf come in, he doesn't say, hey, have you considered this person? You can have him. That's not what a shepherd does. He gets his shepherd's staff and he chases that wolf down and beats a slop out of it. Okay, that's his phrase from Indiana. You all know what it means to beat a slop out of. Okay. He's not going to put up with it. He chew his ears off and spit them in his face. <laughs> I mean, he's like, that's not, a, what is it? False doctrine. Don't tell me that people don't come in every once in a while with their own agenda spreading the heresy. Well, he'd be an heir before God if he didn't get in their face, in Jesus' love, of course, and say, stop that. You can sit here and listen, but you open your mouth, you're out the door, Bubba. That's in Greek, Bubba. <laughs> no, he's a protector. Is this making sense? Yeah. Amen. So then, that's not a light thing, church. I'm just trying to help you out here. Because now he has to give an account before God how he led the church. That happens at the Bema seat. 
The reference is Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. I don't know if I mentioned this before here or not, but I've said it a lot of places, so I'm going to say it again if I did. That means out of those 21 years, I've got to give account of everybody that I was a member of our church. And there's some, brother, I'm looking forward to. Man, they were a blessing that was always there. I don't really know that I didn't keep up with the tithing records, but it's pretty obvious to me they obviously were tithing. And they, were, right, they wanted to do something for you, Lord. And then there's others that uh, I'm not looking forward to giving account for. Hey, I can't lie to God. He already knows the truth. What about this person? Well, God, they came uh, twice, Christmas and Easter. And I don't know because they didn't really look at the books, but I'm thinking they probably weren't tithing. And every time we tried to do something, they would show up off, out of service or something or call me and belly ache and gripe because we want to do something for you. Every time we tried to move forward, they dug their feet in the ground and just was a pain in my neck. God said, that's not going to be profitable for you. See, there's a day coming. I'm just, people, honestly, there is such an ignorance that has plagued the churches of Jesus Christ today. People don't understand the doctrine of the local church. I blame part of that on the Protestants because they think we're all kumbia, one big happy whatever out here and some invisible something. No, 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 no. It is a local visible church and God gave a pastor to each one of those and he's the captain of all of them. That's right. Keep the doctrine straight. Anyway, there aren't any hot shots in the Lord's work. Just get in line, follow the pastor as he follows God's plan for the local church. So here's 2B already. Man, we are fine tonight. 2B. That was 2A. Or 2B or number 2. They had patience and they had faith. That's how they took Jericho. They obeyed their leaders, and they had patience, and they had faith. Back to our text. Here we go, right out of the text. Chapter, or verse 10. Verse 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your mouth, neither shall you any word proceed out of your mouth. Until the day I bid you shout, then you shall shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about at once. And they came in into the camp, and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning. Uh, and, took, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew up the trumpets and the armed men went before them but the river came after the ark of the Lord the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets and the second day they compassed the city once and they returned into the camp so they did six days <laughs> amen alright some questions church could God well that's an easy answer yes <laughs> But play with me. Could God have knocked the... Tell them we're busy right now. <laughs> Could God have knocked the walls down the very first day? Yes. Yes. You ever wonder why he didn't? You want to know why I believe he didn't? He was teaching his children patience, diligence, and faith. That's right. Do you ever pray for something and you have the blessing like Eliza where God answered it for he's even done praying it? Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen every day, but I've seen it happen. Be cool if it did, but it doesn't. You ever pray for something a couple of weeks and it not happened yet? Have you prayed for something for a couple of years and it hasn't happened yet? You, you know, maybe the reason God hasn't answered it yet, he's teaching you discipline. Patience and faith. Yeah. Uh, Amen. Could you imagine marching around that city six days? And what a peculiar command. You can't say anything and you can't make any noise with your mouth. Who ever heard of a battle plan like that? (laughs) Well, his ways are higher than our ways. Amen. 
You know what kind of dis discipline that would have took to keep your mouth shut that whole time? <laughs> if y'all had a big mouth like I have a big mouth, you know how hard that would have been for me to keep my mouth shut the whole way around, I mean the whole way around the city. Here we go, day one. They get home at night. They're having lamb chops. Come on, they're Jews. <laughs> Junior says, Dad, hi, son. How'd it go today? Well, it went. Well, what'd you do? We, uh, huh, we walked. No, 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 no. What'd you do, Dad? No, that's it. We just walked. <laughs> well, what's everybody saying? What's the word on the street? <laughs> Wasn't any words. We didn't say anything. <laughs> you with me here? Day two. Have beef stew. Hey, Dad, how'd it go today? It uh, it uh, it went. What what'd you do today? We uh, walked. That's it. Yep, walked. Anybody say anything? <laughs> nope, not a word. Not a sound. <laughs> Can you get this? Ready for day three? The people on Jericho's wall. Here they come! Sound the alarm! Battle stations, everyone! <laughs> what are they doing? There they go. Can you imagine day five, those guys on the wall? Look, here they come again. <laughs> there they go. They were shut up because they were scared of them. We were scared of these people? Why <laughs> <laughs> y'all don't have imagination when you read the Bible? <laughs> Mine gets pretty wild sometimes, but you know, I can hear them on the wall starting to jeer them a little bit. What are y'all doing? Going for your Sunday walk? Now uh, you wait till the seventh day, Bubba, what's going to happen? You know, God wants us to have discipline. Amen? Yeah. The discipline of daily Bible reading. See, you already mentioned it. I know I'm mentioning it again on purpose. The discipline of daily prayer. The discipline of witnessing. <clears throat> Being faithful to church. Right. Being faithful to soul winning. Whenever the pastor plans it, and sometimes schedules work out, you can only do it once a month, but everybody be here when that happens. I mean, everybody come. Right. And those who can go, go. And those who can't go because their knees don't do the stairs anymore, then you sit on the front row, you bow your head, you get a hold of the throne of God, and you beg God for souls that he'll line up the soul winner with the sinner and that they might see him get saved that day. Hey, when a church goes to praying like that, where the whole church is involved, I mean everybody. Those going and going and those who can't are staying and praying, watch what God will do. Yeah. His hand's not short that it can't save. It's our iniquity that gets in the way. It's our entanglement as a soldier trying to please him. Yeah. Come on, let's stay with it now. We're faithful in our offerings, faithful in our faith promise. Helping to make faithful in our, in our almsgiving where we see a need. We try to be a blessing to someone. And that's just extra on top and above all the other stuff. That's taking care of the pastor. And if you haven't give the pastor a raise in a while, give him a raise. And, and I know that the church might be tight in, in the size. But folks, I've seen God be true to his word. You honor God's man. God honor you. I can't explain it. I'm pretty good at math, but it doesn't make a lick of sense on paper. But it's God. Come on. Well, amen. All right, we move on. Got real quiet there. <laughs> Fact, sometimes we might not even understand what God's doing. And sometimes, if you're like me, Jordan, if you're like me, sometimes you might even get a little frustrated with the details. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you've ever been frustrated with the details. <laughs> but that frustration with the details doesn't help the patients any either. 
You know what I encourage you to do? Take another lap. Take another lap. Could you imagine this guy gets off on the fifth day, comes home, that's it. Hi, Dad. Another word out of you, boy, you're going to your room. <laughs> Tells his wife, you know, this is stupid. My feet are on fire from that sand so hot in the sun out there. And it's like torch my sandals. And, 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 you know, can't even say anything. No wonder he told us not to because we'd all be griping about it for sure. And it's like, you know, and, 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 and you know what? I, I quit, you know, and that's it. I am done. I am not going tomorrow. Question, church. Would the walls fell down? What happens if you quit praying on lap five? You missed it by two days. You were two days from victory. And you stopped. Is this going anywhere? Day seven. Fifth lap. And you stop. Two laps to go. And you stopped. Take another lap. Take another lap. God's teaching discipline. He's teaching patience. He's teaching faith. Trust me. Take another lap. Yes, sir. And friend, on that seventh day, that seventh lap, and those trumpets fired up again, and Joshua gave the command to shout, and they went to shouting like a bunch of Baptists, amen. And those walls fell down flat. Amen. And they went into the city and won the victory. Because yep. they didn't quit. You know, sometimes when we're all frustrated with the details, the devil will slide up on our shoulder and and he starts saying things like, uh, why don't you just quit? You're not making any difference anyway. Besides, God doesn't even care. He doesn't even know where your address is. He sent you out here and he done forgot everything about you. You ever heard the devil lie like that? Did you, can I remind you he's a liar from the beginning? And he's a thief, and a thief come up for to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can get you to pull out on day seven, lap six, and park you on a bench somewhere feeling all sorry for yourself, he won. He's going to do everything he can to keep you from taking that seventh lap. Because he, he knows what God can do. But he's going to lie to you about it because he doesn't want you to trust him. Hello. Right. So here's, a, here's 2C. All right. 2A, they obeyed the leaders. 2B, they, got, they learned patience and faith. And now 2C or number 3, they trust the God for the impossible. <laughs> Amen. Verse 15, here we go. We're, we're, we're moving on. Yep, I got time. Verse 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose up early about the dawning of the day. That takes discipline. And compass the city after the same manner seven times. Only in that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets. And Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him and took the city. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who's ever heard of taking a city with a bunch of trumpets and a shout? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> well, that's God for you. The Ark of the Covenant was a representation of the presence of God. And when Christ is for us, who can be against us? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're on the winning side. Amen. Take another lap. You know, trusting God for the impossible. Verses like Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Do you know when God told Jeremiah that? Anybody remember what Jeremiah was doing when, when God said that? He's in a dungeon. 
knee deep in mire, which included human waste and all kinds of vileness in a hole that I would call a hole of hopelessness. And you know what God told him? Call unto me, and I will answer thee. That's a pretty good promise, don't you think? Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's impossible to save yourself. <laughs> and I'm glad I didn't even have to understand all the soteriology when I got saved. 42 years ago, as a 16-year-old, what I know, my dad was a race driver. I knew how to go fast, turn left. That's it. <laughs> I knew I was a sinner headed to hell. I knew I was in trouble for God. So I asked God, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me playing games with you. And I, and I want you to save me. Please save me. And he did. Amen. See, it's not the prayer that saves you. It's the faith. Right. Amen. amen. <laughs> well, amen. Uh, Brother James said in 1.5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask you God. That giveth all men liberty, and upbraid of not, and it shall be given him. Are these challenging waters that you guys have to face in Green... In, uh, what is it? Greenwood? Greenfield. 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 Yes! Well, ask the master of the ship. He knows how to do it. Trent. Ask him for wisdom which way to set the sail. Amen? Not that you haven't, but take another lap. Uh, amen. How about Jeremiah 32, 17? Oh, Lord God, behold! Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. For there is nothing too hard for thee. Behold, God says, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? <laughs> My prayer for this message tonight that he strengthens the faith of the churches that were present with us tonight. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the? Word of God. You know it. Matthew, or Mark 10, 27. And Jesus looking upon them saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. That context was dealing with people getting saved. Maybe there's somebody in your family you've been praying for for years and years and years. And my uncle JD's 86, and I've been praying for him. And I'm praying, I, I see, finally, after all this time, just last week or a week four, whenever we went through there, I was able to spend some time with him ask some good questions, trying to actually begin to, for the first time, begin to understand the gospel. Pray he gets saved with me. We're talking years. And there's other family members we've been praying for. There's people on Tina's side. There's people on my side. We're praying, God, please save them. Take another lap. We can't stop. Keep on witnessing. Amen? Amen. With God, all things are possible in, in 2D or 4 they obey God in every detail. That's verses 17 to 25. I just summarize it like this for time. They gave everything to God he wanted, and they destroyed everything God wanted destroyed. It's in the text. You can read it on your own when you get home. Amen? All right, so here's number three. That was one, two, here's three. Number three is faith is the victory. Somebody should write a song. <laughs> Unbelief looks at the walls. Faith looks to the Lord. Amen. 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 And they, they had complaints of the promised land. Remember when they came back in Numbers 13, 28? Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children heading there. We can't do it. That cost them 40 years of walking around in the desert. Yeah. Caleb and Joshua, let us go up at once for God's able. That's right. Don't you be one of the other ten that uh, discourages the whole church from going forward. You'd be a Joshua. You'd be a Caleb. God's able. Let's take it tonight. Let's go. Amen? That's called faith. So obstacles are those nasty little things we see when we take our eyes off the Lord. <laughs> yeah, amen. People learn to cope. Here I am walking around this dumb city, burning my toes in the sand. Well, I guess it could be worse. I just learned to cope. Woe is me. Whine. Belly ache. Oh, man, we people cry. Well, you know, it's a nice city after all. And they spend the whole life walking around the city defeated. 
That is not God's will for your life, Christian. Amen. It's not. You need to confess tonight that sin of unbelief and ask God to strengthen your faith and take another lap. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so number four and we're done. Number four is the grace of God. I love this. The grace of God is even at work in judgment. God is judging Jericho. Look at what happens, verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran. Wait a minute, wrong chapter. Verse 22 of chapter 6. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as you swear unto her. Watch, watch. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire. When Rahab got saved, she got on fire for Jesus Christ and she won her family. She won her daddy, she won her mama, she won her kindred, and all of them was taken outside the camp and everyone was spared. Amen. So even in the midst of judgment, people can still get saved. Amen. Do you think God's judging America? Mm. Yeah. Is more coming? Has it already begun? Is he done saving? No. Right. If you're here tonight and you're without the Lord, I want to remind you that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, that's the faith. And with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. That's the repentance. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So there's our look at the life of Joshua in the battle of Jericho. Look how applicable it is tonight. John, wouldn't you agree with me that's way more than a Sunday school lesson? Yes, sir. I mean, that would make a difference in your life. That's what it was written for.